Hello and welcome back to Larry's Praise, where you learn about animals and learn to pronounce your teacher's name. So today we are honoring the, the life of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., important civil rights leader. So, of course, in addition to being a civil rights leader, Dr. King was a minister and recalling the uh, the uh, New Testament description of the role of a minister as a fisher of men, I think we, I think we have to use this animal to honor him. So, kingdom animalia, still an animal. Phylum chordata, vertebrate in class avies. We have a bird here. Order Corexiformes. So the Corexiformes are most the rollers. So they're. They're an order of uh, mostly uh, old world species that are that are noted for uh, brightly colored plumage and uh, acrobatic displays. Uh, so, in, but more specifically, in this case we're looking at family Alcidinidae, the kingfishers, and the, and for the most general representative of the family, we have Alcido aptus be a common kingfisher. So, here it is. See, the small, brightly colored bird. So, you know, some, you know, blue and orange colors typical. Some, some, some uh, populations of, of common kingfishers have uh, brighter colors than th this one, but, so these birds are fairly, fairly small, only six inches long, or ten, ten inch wingspan. But despite that, they're still eating eating fish mostly. That's the name, kingfisher. So mostly they're eating the small fish, minnows, sticklebacks, juveniles of a larger fish like a roach and trout. They can't they can eat fish up to five inches long when they need to, and if, and in environments where there's not as much of a variety of fish, they will also eat aquatic insects and the like. So, fishing for a, for a bird is important. It's, it's a very challenging endeavor. So you, so you, you, you're up. Your bird, you're flying up in the in the air. So these are kingfishers are not ducks. They're not particularly adapted for swimming, and so they have to spot a they have to spot a target, a fish from the air, dive down into the water, grab grab it precisely, and get and if and the Pull, pull up and get out because a bit, you know, birds fl need to be able to fly and if the wings get waterlogged they can't the feathers have the feathers have to remain fairly dry so the bird has to get in and out quickly and so it needs to be able to grab its prey precisely in one in one shot which despite the challenges of going from air to water so that's diff difficult kingfishers do have some adaptations to help so notably, their their eyes are specifically adapted for for diving. So in, so the eyes of most species, humans among others, have have a feature known as the fovea, which is the which is your focal area in the center of your vision. It's where you have where you have the the most uh, visual cells, the clearest acuity, and so if you and so if you look. If you're interested in some particular thing, you look at, you look at it, and you know the fovea is the part of, is the part of your eye that that represents the looking at, as opposed to the peri your peripheral vision. But kingfishers have multiple fovea, so so when it, when the when the when the bird dives into the in, from the air into the water, it doesn't have to adjust adjust where it's looking. Because it, to compensate for the re refraction, so as you may know, what water bends bends light differently than air. So it, so I would, it, it this results in a dif difference in visual angles, for and transitioning from air to water. It's something that, that that humans need need to work to take account for if you're doing things like, if you're doing activities such as a fish spear. Such as spear fishing, where you try to st re reach into the water and stab a, a fish, roughly like the kingfisher is doing. 
humans need to uh, think to adapt to adjust to that because our eyes don't do it automatically. The kingfisher has the multiple phobias, so it, so if it's looking at the fish in the air and then it dives into the water, it's still looking at the fish because because its other phobia is pla is placed in the right spot to compensate for the difference between looking through air and looking through water. So it's a, it's a major adaptation, but even with that a, that adaptation to its task, it's a difficult job being able, being able to uh, catch fish in the in the water. So they, you know, it takes a lot of work for young kingfishers to le to learn this skill, and uh, relatively few of them manage it. Only about a quarter of kingfisher young survive, and even even when they make it to to the, to uh, the to uh, adulthood and being able to reproduce. Its survival is still tricky, uh, so there, there's also all sorts of uh, dangers. Uh, to, you know, toxicity could be a could be a problem because the, you know bio, because of bioaccumulation of poisons. They're they're pretty high in the food chain, going after fish. Uh, they're they're also a pretty pretty well exposed to other predators because they're they're ha they're hanging around around rivers and not. And uh, not not particularly sheltered, so even their even their nesting is usually you know, in, along the river bank rather than up in a tree. We have we have most birds nest in trees for safety. Kingfishers don't, and so they're more more vulnerable, higher mortality rate. So very challenging li lifestyle in the animal world, but yet, of course, they are very successful at it. So here we have the geographic distribution and. The common cake picture is, has an incredibly broad distribution, you know, from, you know, ranging from Ireland all the way to Pacific Islands, so covering basically all of Europe, Asia, north, stretches of North Africa, any any place where there's a suitable body of water for, for the cake fisher to fish in, some some will live in fish because distribution here is in in referring to separate populations, individuals. May, you know, so, some of them will migrate somewhat, you know, for instance, the ones that live in the colder climates in the northern end of Kingfisher Range will have to fly south a bit to not, to not freeze in the winter, but they, don't, they certainly don't travel individually from Ireland to Indonesia. It just doesn't work. So, this is, this is the extent of the species, not of individuals. And... With so many viable populations and distinct, distinctly, because as I said, it's distribu distributively broad rather than individually. They're, this is a species that's not in any particular danger. There's, there, there are lots of them all over the world. So, but, so lesson here: overcome, survive, overcome adversity, and you, and you can. <laughs> You can dominate the world. You can be very successful. Sources: Wikipedia sufficed on this one. King, King Fisher articles, Im images. Both of the photos of King Fisher were by Charles Sharp, and some the map was by some Wikipedia poster using using the pseudonym Devil M25. Right, so there's the there's the there's the kingfisher. I think a suitable spe species to honor Dr. King's legacy. And if you, of course, as far as the the human Dr. King, uh, I'm sure you'll be studying his legacy in your social studies classes. So I need to go into further details on that for now. But have a uh, have a have a great day. Learn learn from it. And, and I'll see you again next week.